Welcome to classes by Inspire Physics. Today uh, we are going to see an important experiment in wave optics. The name of the experiment is Young's double slit experiment. So in the last class we have seen a constructive as well as destructive interference and the pattern of interference fringes. So in this experiment here we have a, a source of monochromatic light. We have a screen, now we have a cardboard and we have a screen here. The cardboard is having two holes S1 and S2. So the source of light is producing wave fronts, spherical wave fronts. These wave fronts will pass through S1 and S2. So these two sources can be considered as coherent sources. From these two sources, wave fronts propagate in forward direction and they will fall on the screen. The point O is the center of the screen. At the center of the screen, from S1 and S2, the path difference is zero. So at the point O, there will be constructive interference and at the point O, we will get a bright band. Okay, now let us consider another point here. We can uh, name the point P. At the point P, we need to find the path difference. The point P can be uh, either um, dark point or bright point. That depends on the path difference. Okay, so we are going to see the path difference between uh, S2P and uh, S1P. So uh, we need to find S2P minus S1P. This is the path difference. So to find the path difference, so we know in the diagram, the distance between the slits and the screen is capital D. Distance between the slits is a D. Between the two sources, S1 and S2 is a D. So this distance is a D by 2, this is D by 2. This is center. From center, the point P is at a distance of Y. So uh, we will consider two right angle triangles. One right angle triangle is S1, P, I just mark a point here, S1, P, M. So I have one right angle triangle, S1, P, M. In the right angle triangle, what is S1, P square? S1, P square is equal to, this is the base, that is D by Pythagoras theorem, it is D square plus, then we need this distance. And clearly in the diagram, this distance is y. This is d by 2. What is this distance pm? pm is equal to y minus d by 2. So y minus d by 2, the whole square. Okay. Now in the bigger right angle triangle, S2PN, I give a point N here. In triangle S2PN, S2P square is equal to, similarly, uh, uh, what we have done in uh, previous place, uh, same thing we have to follow here. So S2P square is equal to S1, S2N, that is capital D, D square plus, what is this distance from here to here, PN, PN is equal to Y plus D by 2. So Y plus D by 2, the whole square. Okay, now we need to subtract these two. So S2P square minus S1P square. When you subtract these two, this will be cancelled, D square will be cancelled. What is left? y plus d by 2 the whole square minus y minus d by 2 the whole square. This we are going to expand. What is y plus d by 2 whole square? That is y square plus 2y into d by 2 plus d square by 4 minus again squaring this y square. Uh, here we, uh, when you take the minus inside you will have plus 2 into y d by 2 then we have a minus d by 2 square is d square by 4. So we can see these two are cancel, this also cancel. When you add these two, what will you get? Two cancels, two cancel here, you will get 2yd. So s2p square minus s1p square is equal to s2p minus s1p. a plus b, a square minus b square is a plus b into a minus b. Applying this here, uh, s2p minus s1p into S2P plus S1. Now what is S2P plus S1P? This length is S2P. This is S1P. Since this distance capital D is very large, compared to this distance small. Small D may be having millimeter range. For example, 3 millimeter, 4 millimeter like that. What about capital D? It can be 1 or 2 meters. So since this distance is large, we can assume that S1P and S2P. Both are nearly equal to what? Capital D. We have the assumption here. Substituting here. 
what is s2 p minus s1 p this is a d and this also d so i can write 2 d is equal to y dt so what is the path difference s2 p minus s1 p it is equal to 2 y d divided by 2 d what it will be y d by capital d this is equation number one this is equation for path difference path difference between and the wave fronts from S2 and S1 at point P is Y D by D. Now, if this path difference is a multiple of N lambda, let us choose that for constructive interference. For constructive means for a bright point, we have the condition Y D by D is equal to N lambda. Where N is having value 0, 1, 2, etc. When N is equal to 0, we will get a central point that is central bright band. When n is equal to 1, I can give y1 is equal to. When n is equal to 1, y1 is equal to n is 1, lambda d by small. When n is equal to 2, I will have y2 is equal to uh, 2 lambda d by d and so on. First bright band, second bright band. Means uh, of central bright band we are not considering, it is already a bright band here. Then uh, when n is equal to 1, we will get this first bright band after this, uh, after the central bright band, then second bright band and so on. So generally what we can write, we can write y n is equal to n lambda d by, sorry, n lambda capital D by small d. This equation, equation number 2. This is a condition for constructive interference. Now we will see for destructive interference. For destructive, we have the condition that we have seen in previous classes. For destructive interference, the path difference y d by d should be equal to n plus 1 by 2 lambda. Okay, n can take values like 0, 1, 2, etc. When I give n is equal to 0, uh, you will get uh, y1 is equal to, similar to this y1 is equal to uh, lambda d by 2d. When n is equal to 2, we have a 3 lambda d by 2d. So generally, what is the equation? Y n is equal to y n is equal to we can have the equation n plus 1 by 2 lambda d by small d. This is equation number 3. This is a general equation uh, for uh, destructive interference. Okay. So y1 by 2, etc. Now we will just plot the graph showing the intensity, variation of intensity with the intensity for a bright and dark band. So here we can see the, the center of the screen. At the center of the screen intensity is maximum corresponding to a bright band. So we have a bright point at the center. Okay, so we will have bright point. I just mark as B, bright point at the center. Then next to bright point here, this is next bright point on the other side. So we can see that intensity of each bright band is the same. Then from bright band to dark band, the intensity decreases to zero. For the dark band, intensity will be zero. For bright band intensity, we have seen intensity of bright band uh, proportional to 4 a square. Okay, that we have seen. So uh, this is the intensity of bright band. These are the intensity of dark bands. Now we will see the fringe width. Fringe width means the distance between two consecutive bright band or dark band. So, for example, we need to find the distance. This distance we need to take. This is one dark band next to dark band. So, this distance we need to measure. This length we need to measure. What will be this length? From uh, center to first bright band, what is the distance? We have uh, lambda d by d. First bright band lambda d by d. Okay. From center to first dark band, what is the distance? For dark band, we have lambda d by 2d. This is lambda d by 2d. Next to dark band, we have uh, 3 lambda d by 2d. Now we need to subtract these two. What will you get when you subtract these two? We have a uh, 3 lambda d by 2d for, uh, for second dark band minus first dark band. That is lambda d by 2d. You will get 2 lambda d by 2d or it is equal to lambda d by d. So generally we can write like this. Distance between two consecutive bright band or dark band. If you take bright band, we can have the equation uh, fringe width. This is equation symbol of fringe width. This is equal to 
y n plus 1 minus y n. Okay, for right band what we have to do, for constructor we have this equation here, that is n lambda d by d, that is y uh, n plus 1 n plus 1 lambda d by d minus n lambda d by d. Distance between two consecutive bright band. If you have to use the dark band, we have to use this equation. In both equation, when you, when you subtract 3 lambda d by 2d minus lambda d by d, you have got lambda d by d. If you subtract lambda d by d minus the 0, that is one bright band, next bright band. Again, you will get the same answer. So, uh, both fringes, so dark fringes and bright fringes are having same width. So, fringe width will be same. So, what will you get? That is n to bright band. This is n plus 1 to, that is next consecutive next to bright band. When you find the distance between these two, what will you get? You can see that fringe width is equal to n plus 1, that is n. n plus 1 minus n will be 1. So, you get lambda d by d. This is the fringe width. So, this you can calculate either using this equation or directly you can calculate from these values. So, we have seen that fringe width, that is the width of a dark band or bright band having same value, same fringe width. Okay. Now, we have one more equation, angular width. Angular width is equal to fringe width divided by capital D. This distance we have to divide. What is the equation here? Fringe width by capital D. When you divide capital D, you will get lambda by small d. This width is called, a, we can say it is angular width. So, angular width is equal to fringe width divided by distance between uh, slit and screen. Okay, so we have got a few equations related to Young's double slit experiment. We have shown that uh, the fringe width of uh, dark band and bright band having same value. Okay, what is the value of fringe width? Lambda capital D by small d. So, we can show that the fringe width is directly proportional to capital D, wavelength of light inversely proportional to distance between the uh, slits S1 and S2. Okay. Now, angular width is depending on uh, the values like your wavelength and a small d. Angular width is independent of the distance capital D. Fringe width depends on capital D. Angular width is independent of what capital D de depends only on wavelength and a distance between the slits. Now, here in the experiment, we have used a monochromatic source of light. If you use white light, what we observe is the central uh, width will be, uh, central fringe will be white colored. We can get a white colored central fringe and on either side, a red colored fringes are seen and on farther side, we can see blue colored fringes. So, that's what happens when we replace a monochromatic source with a white light. So, fringes will be colored rather than uh, dark and um, bright, uh, dark and white fringes. Okay, so fringes will be colored when we use white light. Now, what happens if we immerse the apparatus in uh, any liquid like water? What happens is uh, the refractiveness of water or any such liquid is more than one. So, the wavelength will go on decreasing. When the wavelength decreases, the fringe width also decreases. So, we have new wavelength. In liquid, we can say lambda dot is equal to lambda by n. n is more than 1. So, lambda dash decreases, fringe width also decreases. When we immerse the entire apparatus in water, fringe width decreases. Now, if you uh, make the slits more wider, if you increase the width of the slit, then the fringes will overlap and they will disappear. When we increase the distance small d, then also the same thing will happen. If we increase capital D also, the fringes will overlap and the fringes will disappear. If any one hole is closed, any one slit is closed, then also the fringe pattern will be disappeared. Okay, so that's about uh, fringe width and Young's double slit experiment. Okay, I hope that you have understood. Thank you.